Hey everyone, how's it going? Rich here. Just dropping a new uh, Junk Punk news update to show, well it's like a devlog really again I guess. I always can't remember what I want to call these but basically I thought I'd do another video to show you the progress of what's happening with uh, the next stage of the game and all the stuff that we're sending um, in the next update. Um, a little bit longer than I'd hoped. I know I said um, end of August in the last uh, video that I did but it's definitely going to go into September now um, and I'm going to go over the reasons why that's happening um, so firstly I've been going through the game playing it from the start to finish and what's really interesting actually is when, when we talk about games and when we talk about like what kind of examples we have of games that we love playing and player bases and what they do and like all of the all of the statistics we have on junk punk we find some interesting stuff um, it's so it's so crazy how many people um, like I was playing Cyberpunk for the first time actually over the last two weeks and um, I have realized how many people don't even complete stuff like the main storyline I think I saw an achievement on there the other day that was um, I'll just turn on the sound that was literally like uh, what was it it was 30% you know, of people or something um, oh, I've got it turned down in um, Windows uh, it was only like 30 or 40 percent of people who completed the main storyline and for a game like um, for a game like cyberpunk I thought that was incredible um, yeah I really thought that was quite crazy um, and how many people play that play into so many hours of a game for example but I've done a lot of studying done a lot of research and that kind of stuff um, and what I've realized is is that actually um, it, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard, really, to accept it. But for for even the most top tier games, most people don't even finish them. Um, so that's something that um, is really interesting to hear and really interesting to figure out. Um, how we go about getting people to basically play the game more is like, you know, part of the updates and part of the improvements that we're making. Um, it would be interesting to have a wider discussion. Um, about why that is with whoever is relevant but I feel like there, there must be a way to get people to play more whether it's a life thing or a time thing or whatever thing it is just really interesting to see that actually you know a lot of people don't really make it past 10 hours on any game um, and then as soon as you're past that you become an outlier and I guess that depends on your chosen game really but I digress you can see uh, what well the older players of you who, who have played this game a few times um, will see that this area is way more flat now um, and what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks is just compiling a list and some of you would have seen it in discord the other day of me basically um, me basically going onto discord and showing people what I'm doing I'm going to show people that in a second actually so um, firstly I've been doing some special effects work and so I'm hoping that when we push this next update out that we will have some cool animations to play each time a uh, each time a machine is built um, and you'll see all the parts fly together um, rather than it just instantaneously popping out um, I fl I'm flattening, flattening a lot more of the ground and I will, um, I'm going to just take a walk up to the next monolith and show you more why um, but uh, what I wanted was an area that people could start with without having to necessarily use foundations so now when you want to play stuff it's way easier especially at the start of the game right um, you know it's it's much better you won't just you won't get as much red as on these hillsides we are going to reduce the tolerance so you can place machines in more areas but for now what i think i've done is a really nice kind of um middle ground where you can have best of both worlds really it's a bit flatter um, i think what threw me off as well in this design is that basically we have um we have a world generator that generates us a landscape based on mathematics um, and actually I probably should have considered that more uh, the, the actual world generator as a design tool um, when we were making the game because um, when you notice other factory games they have they've got designated areas that are quite flat or you know that quite a lot of the map is flat so um, what I've noticed is actually although the world generator is great and it made us a really cool world um, it's not really uh, I think conducive is the right word towards having a um, factory based map um, until you figure out a mechanic that helps that um, but as you can see there's far more flat ground just knocking about now but it's still 
Um, you still have the same layout and the elevations are still the same to get to the monolith and stuff. But what I've done is just given people way more opportunity to build more bases all over the place. Um, and what I will, what we are doing as well is just doing lots of quad things. And while we got to the monolith, I'm going to explain exactly what we're doing. So um, I've been looking at a lot of games and been looking at what we do and how we do stuff. And um, stuff like, for example, uh, toggling. Although we had the sprint toggled off, that's going to be toggled by default. So you're always sprinting unless you want it off and then you can walk, right? Um, that's something that should be on by default. Some people don't even know it's there. Um, also, being super critical about exactly where things go in the game. So we're, we're really happy with how the little the first tutorial is. I'm going to show everyone up here. Um, I'm going to show everyone exactly what we're changing and stuff like that. But um, where the first little tutorial is when you come out of the monolith, um, although we do tell you the ingredients list in the recipes manual, we don't actually tell you that the recipe manual was there. So it's like little things like that that we need to improve that I think is hurt, that are hurting us. But um, I say hurting us, it's not really like that bad. But it's those little things that stop you from being great. You know, we want to be a great game. Um, I've put out a lot more flat land here. Um, there was a huge mountain here before. I think this works really well to allow you to construct whatever you want up here. I'm going to deform it a bit so it's not perfectly flat. But I'm just in the initial stages of mapping that out um, and finishing it off. But what I will do is I'm going to start doing stuff up here and I'm going to explain exactly what else we're changing. Um, so uh, some of you may notice and that you'd have to have a pretty keen eye, but the ghost material has now changed. And now we've got a math based formula to actually have a ghost system. So it should display all of the objects a lot nicer. It should actually render them correctly based on how they look rather than just having a, a texture on them. So you can actually see that the corners of stuff when they ghost, they actually have a um, they actually have like a, a bigger line on those corners and on those like recesses. You can see it a lot on this one. Um, but I will construct a crafting bench because that's green for me. Um, now, uh, obviously, this this kind of same UI is getting passed along to everyone. Um, I'm gonna just make five large large gears. Uh, three. Four, five, and I'll build the first machine shredder um, and this brings me on to my next change that I'm uh, putting on so um, we're probably going to redo these machines it won't break any saves because we're just going to retexture them or remodel them but the outputs will be the same so um, I'm just not a fan of them we did them when we were short on time so I may get these redone um, but what you will see is um, here we have now got on the exit of everything we have this cool little 3D grid to just display to people exactly where the output is. Um, again, just a quality of life. And when it gets dark, it's really helpful. Um, and if I get the separator and I get some more gears, then I'll show you exactly uh, how it works because it works both input and output. And then that also leads me onto the belt changes that we have. Um, and also, um, for those of you that are uh, wondering about Monolith 3 uh, or Slash 4, I'm gonna fly over to them. Um, you can check them out. Um, you may be able to even see it in the distance from here in this angle. Um, if I still have it in the map, yeah, it's over there. But um, I don't know if I want to go over to that one just yet, because that's a secret one in a way. But there is uh, number three. We'll go over there soon. Um, and yeah, I will do a proper reveal for this all when I have that moment finished, but I wanted to show the community our progress anyway, just so everyone knows where we're at. Um, separator, I'll get four large gears and then you'll see um, you'll see what I mean. Um, so I'm actually weirdly just playing more in first person these days. I, I personally like it um, and I think it's something that we need to build on and I want us to focus on having both compatible kind of um, first and third person modes because I think they're both really good. Um, right, separator. So, uh, again with these ones, I'm not too happy, I, I will probably end up changing these. A lot of qual I notice, so, so we have FPS and if you're in third person, you can, you can still do it the same way, um, which is really good, but um, what I notice is that with belts, for example, and I'll show you, uh, you can't do that with belts, I need to get rubber scrap. Um, let's go find some of that. Do, do, do. I think there's some down here, I don't remember where all the piles are, but... 
think there's some close by. I want to make some map improvements as well. Um, there's some rubber. I don't know if the grenades were finished, but yes, let's have a look. Yeah, so we've added a grenade to the game, like a kind of explosive that you can throw. It will kill me there, so I need to get back. But um, it will now, you can now blow stuff up with the frag, which is really nice. But we, we're going to do something different because although it is a grenade and it's cool that it blows up and it collects items for you, um, what I do want to do is have it so that um, I've probably got ridiculous amounts of rubber now. Yeah, 200. Um, what I do want to do is have it so it's a bit more fitting for our setting because just having a frag for no reason doesn't make sense. So we have designed a cool like laser-esque grenade that will clean up scrap for you, uh, which we're working on at the moment. But <coughs> excuse me. Um, as of now, we just we've just got that for testing purposes basically, which is cool. And they fire off a different effect each time. Um, it can be totally different. It's really nice actually. Uh, different sound effects, different explosion types, um, which is cool, um, and it's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, but what was I doing? Belts. That was it. So I need rubber scrap. I've got all of that. So belts. Belts. Actually, we again now is a ghost rather than and at night time. This is just much better, right? To be able to see exactly what you're doing. Now belts were always a bit janky, and we've got a lot of upgrades upgrades coming through for belts. Um, because we've, we've done a lot of upgrades on belts for gunsmith, so soon those are going to be coming over into junk punk as well. Um, now, as you can see here, you didn't get the ghost before. What used to happen is you just click it and it would go wacky straight away. It just starts flipping out everywhere. So now you get an, you get an offset and it's nice and organized and you can see the output. Um, it's a nice ghost so you can place at night time and then you can put it up here and what will happen is um, when I'm done with it I'm, I would like a nice effect that's kind of linking them but um, for now you can see that on here you've got the output and the input and then you can just place away um, but what we notice again is that for some random reason we don't although we place machines like this with the head and we also do other stuff like laser with the head with belts we get the cursor out don't know why we do that we checked other games they don't do that so all I can imagine is just a breakdown of communication and design we even apparently did test it with the head thing and I said no don't do it that way I don't even remember it but um, we're gonna go and look at that again and try and basically get consistency with our design and I think that's something that is really important in making a good game um, especially of this magnitude so lots of uh, lots more improvements when it comes to qual seeing how things work how belts work and stuff like that um, again with mergers and splitters um, it will be um, one after the other sort of thing so so you can organize it like perfectly how you want stuff to come in and out um, now yeah so that's a lot I've talked a lot about that um, I guess what I will do is go over and do the awesome um, I'm gonna get the jetpack though just because it's far away um, but yeah so I'll fly up um, and show you oh. um, so uh, what I'm also going to do is I feel that I am going to replace these words with icons and try and condense this uh, so it's nicer and it's all uniform and you can see it. Just general improvements to UI overall, you know. Um, but yeah, so it's really important. All of these things are super important and I know what the last thing I want us to do is get frustrations and we saw the UI update in the last video so I'm hoping that this game is going to be so smooth and so easy to play and just so lovely. You know that it's it's really bug free and really a joy to play um now yeah i'm gonna probably replace these with icons and when you hover over it will explain what they are again but um yeah you can see here like, i flattened out a lot of landscapes so it's much easier to play the game now it's a lot easier to build a base now it, in some instances um you will probably have a scenario where maybe maybe a small maybe your base has been swallowed up by my map changes but I think that's um, not too likely because I've mainly lowered down rather than gone up so what you might have is stuff floating in the air but it should still be totally functional um, so that's the only caveat to this update but I feel that it's, t it's necessary oh god I'll get rid of the saving hitch man um, I, uh, I feel it's necessary to do that so that we you know can um, I lost my trailer fort there, uh, trailer fort even, I feel it's necessary, um, oh, bloody hell. 
<laughs> it's gone out of my head now, I'm so tired. Um, but yeah, basically, I um, I'm flying over to Monolith uh, four now, four slash three, depending on how you want to play it out. Um, there is like storyline surprise here, but here is the awesome reveal. It's looking really cool, guys. Um, I am still doing the interior, so I'm not going to show the entire interior today. Um, and I am still rigging it all up, but again we're making more of a, a flat surface obviously we'll deform it all and make it into a nicer map but we're mapping out the exact area of game now you know and where you can play and i've done the roads um and it's all linked up um uh, let's go down there's probably even more than this to show today but i'm um aware it's gonna be a 20 minute video and i want to get it posted and i want to get it sorted um online for everyone to check out over the weekend uh, had a file corruption issue so lost all my plants and I'm having to redo those now joy for IT hate it um, here's a sneak peek of the inside um, now when I uh, get really I'm gonna turn the torch off so you can see the lighting properly but when I get really close to finishing this and finishing all the interior I'm gonna stop posting content because I want you guys to go play it rather than me just keep showing you previews but it's awesome we've mapped out the design and it's gonna be really fun to play I think um, so I will leave for now uh, and come back and finish all of that later and you'll see that in the next monolith reveal um, just like we did with two um, and yeah so I think what I will do um, is just have a I'll trigger mono one and mono two um, and yeah we can have a quick chat about the game um, so basically this is monolith three slash four um, and then the other one is over here I'll just do a very brief flyby of this one um, so I'm not going to show anyone any actual details because I'm still working on it. Um, it's still big, it's still big in production. Um, and some of you asked why we're we working on two at the same time. Um, well, that's because they interact with each other. So again, I'm, it's not, I'm not going to do any spoilers, but essentially um, I need them both to be ready at the same time as a part of the story and a part of the lore. Um, and as part of gameplay as well, so um, that's something that we basically had to do. Um, well, in, on the flip side, it means that we've done four out of five, which is awesome. Um, really, really awesome, right? Um, but this is our ocean monolith, which looks absolutely amazing, and it's huge. It's so huge. I think it takes up the entire capsule of um, of the rocket. Um, I almost feel like sometimes I need to make this faster, but then I forget how fast it really is. It's actually a really fast jetpack. Nine, eight, seven, six. There we go. Five. So that one, if he's going to clean the oceans, um, it's going to make them habitable, um, and that'll be four out of five. Um, that's ignition of two. Now I've triggered it. Um, and yeah, and then we have obviously all of our plant life mechanics that we saw the other day. So. Yeah, really, um, things are going well. Very happy with progress. Um, there's just a lot more to nail down. I really want to start getting all this stuff gone. Like, I want to have these better um, experiences when it comes to people using the game, not getting frustrated, um, you know, uh, doing the right. I'm also, maybe want to change this camera in the vehicles. I don't know if I like that. Um, I think I just want it to stay the same as the player. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I think we need to get all these frustrations out. Um, they frustrate me. They may not frustrate everyone, but I personally want them gone. Um, I want them to be really smooth, really sleek. And as soon as, as soon now as I see something that frustrates me even slightly, it basically goes on the list of, oh, he's going over. It's all right. Basically, <laughs> oh, we need to sort this out because we've uh, done new leaf need to do some bug fixes but um yeah as soon as we um get out all of these little niggles then i'll be much happier um just as a base game sort of thing that people can come in and really understand because like i was saying about the recipe thing the recipes manual is here and it does say about the tech key but we don't tell you what that is so obviously we need to start improving stuff like that and improving uh, improving that kind of accessibility usability all of those all of those buzzwords i guess but um yeah um, I'm happy where it's going, and I really think that over the next co course of the next update in Monolith 3, um, there'll be a massive change. I'm, I'm still we're still very confident that this won't break any saves, so you should just be able to keep playing if you are a, uh, a returning player. 
Um, and oh yeah, just some graphics improvements in general, just with stuff like this, uh, where I wasn't happy with the textures. But yeah, um, I'm really busy doing a lot of different things at the moment, and um, hopefully we've got some exciting, more exciting news to share with you soon about uh, various um, developments with the entire studio. But um, uh, I'm not going to jinx it, so I'm just going to leave it there. And if it happens, I'll let you all know. But um, I think that uh, this will really help once we get these quality-lized things done. I want to make changes to the map. I want to do things like having the keys that you will have ba you have bound to each button visible again, so it's like it's easy to understand exactly where things are. You don't have to look it up. You can just press the key, yada yada yada. All of that, like you don't understand until you're making a game of this complexity it doesn't really hit you i guess as a developer some developers get it right like first time i guess maybe they've got um a lot of external support or they've got tons of experience in these kind of games but um when it's a game of this magnitude and this size and you are on a micro budget basically um and the game hasn't gone totally viral then it takes a lot longer because i can't get that external like expertise for ui or ux we just kind of have to figure it out ourselves and listen to community feedback which you guys have been great on so thank you for that um if anyone's made anyone else has got any frustration i really want to know for this next update if they're major frustrations so i can actually um you know address those and we can um we can get them fixed for that update but i'm nearly at 22 minutes now so i'm going to wrap up and just say thanks very much everyone monolith 3 will be with me soon I'm hoping it'll be maybe the end of September now, um, just because now that I'm playing it, I want to make more changes, and instead of just adding another monolith, I, every time we add a monolith, I want significant quality of life improvements, significant improvements in all aspects of the game as well. Um, so again, vehicles might be something that I look at, because I know people, a lot, they are very squishy, and people want them to be a bit tighter. Um, so that's something as well that I'm going to be looking at. Um, but um, overall, slight delay, but I think it'll be worth it in the end, because... Um, it's going to be better for new players, better for existing players, um, less frustrating, uh, better usability. Hopefully I'll get around to making the UI better as well. So it's just with major, major, major improvements coming again. Um, and I really hope that if you're a YouTuber, you can give us a little bit of love and show us off, um, help us grow our game. Um, always, it really helps us, um, especially in these periods when um, we are making content and uh we're a bit we're a bit um low on exposure um but yeah i think i'll wrap it up there and uh yeah everyone have a good weekend i will see you next month hopefully with an awesome monolith reveal with all of the interior done all of the gameplay examples done and um it'll be awesome and and, and hopefully i'll give you a date a date for drop in as well dropping that update so take care have a good weekend i'll see you soon bye bye